I didn't have anywhere to stay. Okay. So you know what I did? I remembered that during my first event, okay, before now, I saw that second during my first event, there was a guy that came to me and told me, what was his name? I can't remember, but he came and told me, man, we really, really appreciate what you did for us today. And if you ever need anything, we live in the ghetto, but if you ever need anything, emo, emoji was his name, emoji. If you ever need anything, call us or call me. These are the guys that live in the, the ghetto in, it's called Nyabirambo in, in Rwanda. They live there. And you know what I did? I called the guy. Actually, before, so what happened was, uh, so when I went to Rwanda, I used to, so the first one week, I used to stay with one of my students from Kenya. Mm, mm. So she was like, you know what, when you go there, uh, my boyfriend stays here, you can stay with us for some time. But Hashi was still in Kenya, so she joined another DJ Academy after I had closed. Mm. So I was just staying with the, the boyfriend. Uh, but she later came back. And when she later came back, I, I, I noticed some insecurities with the, the, boyfriend. the boyfriend. And one day he locked me out. Can you imagine in the middle of the night, I'm leaving an event like this and I've got nowhere to sleep. At 2 a.m. in the morning, that's when I called Omiji, the guy from the ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> and, he said, and he picked up and he told me, you know what? The guy first of all threw my clothes over the gate with a, on, in, a, in a green paper bag. He was like, no, nah, you can't stay here. Like, I, I went to Omiji's place, the ghetto. And so Omiji picked me up at the bus station, bus stop. Bro, this is a movie. <laughs> so Omiji picked me up at the bus stop. This is two in the morning. Took me first of all somewhere. I ate some, in the ghetto, nothing closes. Eh? Yeah. Always 24 hours economy. Some pilau I ate, and then he says, Okay, so I'll show you where you'll be sleeping. Uh, we won't charge you anything when you have something, just provide, just uh, give us something. Uh, he took me to a room, hmm? unless I'm wrong, there were like eight people inside that room, mm. every space was occupied, <laughs> and then there was a small mattress by the corner somewhere that I was sharing with him, okay. Because there's a bed there, but there's a couple on that bed and another guy, and then the stick room, there's like two more people. And yeah. Man. So it's just me and my MacBook. Now I don't have the decks, so I've taken them to sleep. And uh, when you sleep, when you face the wall, you can't face the other side because now you're right face to face <laughs> with the other guy. And that was my home for like three, four months. And three, you know what four I used to months. Do? Yeah. As I built my radio career now with cedric so what cedric did he told me i can give you transport to be coming to work so cedric gave me 2000 run on france a week which was like 200 shillings or so i can't remember and a bus card so in run is very organized you can get a card that you can just jump you tap and go then it drops you wherever you're going and then at this point i'm still building myself as a dj so where so where are you practicing a lot at least four hours a day. Oh, that place? Yeah. Okay. It was a hot, big hotel. It's called Amigo. It was huge. So they could allow me to go in. They could allow me to eat with their employees. So if I didn't have food, I could go in and join their employees and they're eating. And they allowed me to shower at their place because they're ghetto. The showering place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the showering place is somewhere where you... Nigunia. Yeah. There's no roof. Yeah. That was the shower. I remember. Oh, my goodness. I used to go shower because at this particular point you're showering like twice a week. Yeah. And the tiles on the floor would be black. Key. Imagine. And I still had my one jacket, my leather jacket. One day I washed that jacket. <laughs> it was unbelievable. <laughs> Bro, you yeah. come from far. What? It was insane. And and all this time, first of all, my relationship, my mom wasn't there, so couldn't ask her for help. Mm. Sometimes when I tell her this story, she gets a bit emotional, but oh well, it's life. Uh, so yeah, I, you know, what do you start doing at the radio station? So at the radio station, so I become, so I start helping Cedric with music. So now for people to listen to our radio, now we, we, we need to have a good playlist. And I had music from all my collection. And, uh, the second thing is content. Okay. So I told him, okay. You know what you can do? Start playing DJ mixes on weekends. 
and the radio station starts improving, starts improving, starts improving. Now we can see some people come in. They say, he says, okay, uh, you know what? Uh, put me in there now, live over the weekends, Friday, Saturday. Now I'm doing it here and there. Playing mixes. Playing DJ. mixes, yeah. yeah. Are you talking? Oh, I had a host. Okay. Yeah. Because of the language barrier. No, really, we used to use English. So okay. now we're even introducing English because English wasn't a thing on radio there. Okay. We're not introducing English. And the radio is saying to improve. Cedric starts giving me 60,000. Ronald and France, 60,000 is like 10 years a month. Oh, nice. Yeah. So do you move out of the ghetto? No, I'm still in the ghetto. Yeah. So what I used to do is, the money I used to make uh, while DJing, I used to give it to those guys mm. for food. So we would cook one meal a day, mm. which is always ugali. Mm. Ugali beans and one piece of meat. And let me tell you something. If, you, if you're looking for people that are blessed when it comes to humanity, mm. it's those guys. Mm. If they have one thing, okay, you share. You share. They used to buy one beer. <laughs> And they say this is ours. Everyone takes a sip. And, and the beers, and the beers, the beer is like this big. Those big beers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the course. They say this is this is ours. And they'll sit there, and everybody will take a sip, take a sip, take a sip, take a sip. When they cook food in the cocosinia, then you guys share. So me, the money I made, since they're giving me accommodation, I'm not sleeping outside. But it was, it was like outside because the door, the door had such a big hole <laughs> that a dog would easily come. <laughs> It's a point it became a norm. I'm like, oh, it's okay. <laughs> because the door has such a big hole at the bottom there. Yeah. Because it was so old, it had I think it has drusted. Yeah. A thief could literally just crawl in and take your stuff and go. But anyway, I mean well, seven guys in the house. Yeah. Who would risk coming yeah, in? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I hadn't moved out. And then, uh, so, so Cedric started giving me something and, and in the last part about the ghetto, you know, why, you know, it became so big that because I had a laptop, okay, and there people didn't have TVs and stuff. People would come to our, our spot once I come back to work, from work, for entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> with your laptop. With my laptop. <laughs> so and you have to charge it. You have to charge it in the office. No, no, we food. had electricity. Okay, we had electricity. Yeah. Oh, nice. And you know what we're watching? I had a whole, I think, nine series of How I Met Your Mother. Mm. And we started from season one, episode one. <laughs> <laughs> this is one, episode one. Every day, guys will come and continue. <laughs> and also, this, all these guys watching. Mm. So we're like 10, but only like four guys understand English. But guys are watching. Guys are hey. like it, it was me yeah, religiously. <laughs> every day. Every day at 6 p.m. to 8 oh, or 9. Crazy. We were watching how much your mama few episodes. <laughs> then we retired to our chamber. Ash, 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 ash Ron Entertainment. Uh, yeah, Ash Ron Entertainment, <laughs> yeah. That's and funny. and then uh yeah, so eventually I had to move out of the ghetto, but so after the radio had grown and so on. Mm it was time for us now to the ready for it to start a tv now oh yeah so, so what what was your what was your head so I, I became the production manager at some point i had now my own show now i'm making some money 120,000 one in france what, plus, what, what what does that look like in it's like 20 g's oh okay so uh, 200 dollars yeah okay but you moved from hey, before we're saying 20. yeah now it's that's times 10 that's yeah, multiplication yeah, yeah. And, and I had gotten so close to Cedric that he was literally my buddy. He was my friend now. Uh, so I used yeah. to start sitting at his office and then he started favoring me anytime there was events, his friends, he would call me and so on. Yeah. And, I, and you still have this DJ gig? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I still have it. And then now I started not getting private gigs here and there. So now I'm doing events outside. Now you're there. a DJ. Now, yeah, now, yeah, now, yeah, now, yeah. now I'm something, you, yeah. yeah. My name is heard all over the radio and so on. And then, uh, <coughs> oh, nice! You are using the radio to promote yourself as a DJ. Yeah. So now people started calling you directly. Yeah. First of all, and what about legality, or, or Kenya's relationship with Rwanda? Is very you're good. allowed to work? You're allowed no, to work? No, I don't. I don't think so. But it, it wasn't as crazy. Even now, I don't think it's that crazy. You can still do it here and there. So, but the visa you had gone with was just a uh, visiting. Months. Yeah. Okay. You, you cross the border and come back every six months. Okay. Yeah. 
So yeah, I <laughs> you don't have a bank account, so everything you've been paid is cash. No, I've got a bank account in Rwanda. Yeah, you don't need a visa to open a bank account in Rwanda. We are from Kenya. Oh, aye, man, that's good relationships. It's crazy, it's insane. They treat Kenyans very well there. It's like home. <laughs> Yo, that's so good to it's know. It's like home, yeah. So now Cedric says, okay, so no, I tell Cedric we've been receiving so many commercials. What year are we now? We're in 2010. 2010 now. Yeah, 2010, 1920, towards 2011. There, uh, I tell Cedric, you know what? Let's open a production studio because pe- many people are coming here asking us to produce commercials and we do it for free. Let's open a, a production studio. Make me the CEO of that production studio, or at least the manager. Mm. Allow me to bring my team, three of three people from Kenya. And then whatever we make from that production studio, we use that to pay ourselves. Cedric agreed. What? <laughs> and this, 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 com- this, this uh, radio working for had property somewhere else, on top of a hill called Dreberon. It was next. And uh, it was really nice. It was really nice. Like it looked like a proper studio. They had plans of moving the radio there, but then Cedric convinced them to keep it where it, it was because it was a commercial place. Because the owner had gotten tired of this radio not being profitable mm. and he wanted to just move it there. So he built the studio for them, but they didn't really move. And that's why I told Cedric, let's create a studio there. And we did that. And you know what uh, the studio turned into? Mm. A studio slash my home. <laughs> so that's how I moved from the ghetto. Aye, 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 aye. And uh, I didn't have a mattress, I didn't have anything. So what I used to do is I used to combine a joint chairs, office chairs, like three, and I would sleep there the whole night. And in the morning when the sun is out, they had very good crust, I would go out there and I'll sleep, finish my sleep there. <laughs> and showering? I used to shower from, there was, there was the bathroom there. Okay. But now at least I'm doing it every day. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You become clean. Yeah, you become clean. But in Karai, you just yeah. pour some water on yourself. Yeah. And uh, we got a producer. So you said you're bringing three people f- you, from Kenya. Who did yeah. you bring? So I brought a guy called Nez, Neville. He was a very good radio presenter. He still is. But he doesn't work there anymore. Then they brought uh, George. I brought four, sorry. And I brought George, my Supra guy, who's now working for BBC. <laughs> then I brought my sister. What? Okay. Then I brought my sister, but they didn't know she was my sister. I just wanted to get her out of Kenya. And I brought a guy called Walker, who was a very good friend of mine. 